So what do you think is the status right now with biodiversity, both at Asia, right? And generally biodiversity. That is, that is a really good question. Now, if you look at Trinidad from a, a geological perspective, you can see that we're just off of the South American coast and such a small island. So we have a lot of concentrated um, plants and animals and so on. Um, so we have been naturally gifted with that. The main problem seems to be that you got uh, the uh, ideology of people and um, their companies, which sometimes tends to affect um, the wildlife here negatively. Okay. So you kind of, you basically went on to my next question. What are the issues associated with biodiversity that you know about for biodiversity in general? So many issues. Um, it's happening. Uh, uh, throughout the world, you can see that there is quarrying, there is basically uh, um, land and degradation, hunting, the, the uh, global population is rising, so you need to facilitate uh, these people. So there are many, many issues um, which we are all facing, and uh, yeah, so it is a very, very big challenge. So what do you think we can do to really mitigate that challenge? Well, the only thing we can do is start uh, with ourselves. You know, that's the only person or thing that you can guarantee to change. So I think we all need to start looking uh, within ourselves as, as, as people, um, as human beings, as someone who has uh, shared, you know, this, this space of lives um, with people. We, we need to start reducing our carbon footprint, basically. That's the most important thing. I fully agree with you. I, I've been ex I've been exposed to different conferences and I didn't realize how much carbon that we emit just by simple activities that we do. So we just spoke about the issues, but do you think Trinidad is doing enough to address those issues? Um, that is a very good question. Um, I would like to say no, but we are improving. Just uh, two months ago, there was a legislation passed for the protection of roughly 40% of the land um, in Trinidad, which is going to be um, our biggest step towards conservation. So things like that shows that there is promise. We have lots of laws and uh, regulations put in place, but the big issue always seems to be enforcement. And what do you think is the status of biodiversity in Trinidad? Is it a talked about topic? Well, it's a little more talked about now than it was previously, but um, generally, when I when I speak, I will focus more on the coastal and marine. Right. Um, most of our ecosystems have been actually damaged, and what exists today are degraded. Um, that's because we live on a small island state, and most of our development is coastal, and everything that we do on land ends up in the ocean, so it impacts our near shore environment and our offshore environment. We also, well oil producing countries so a lot of our activities again occur in the ocean and that would have a negative impact on some on the biodiversity. So we have issues in terms of degradation of the environment, we have issues with pollution, but we also have issues with over exploitation of our marine resources. Okay. It seems that there's numerous issues affecting us, especially as a small island. Yes. Do you know any ways that we can address these? Or do you think that they are ways of addressing them right now? Well, the, the things that the government is doing with regards to policy, um, developing policy and action plans and so on right now, um, we're, we, we're developing an integrated coastal zone management policy. And again, that has to, to, to try to address some of the coastal zone issues because as I mentioned being on a small island being a small island state a lot of our impacts are actually from the land right. and along the coast where most of our development takes place we work we live on the coast um, so we have this policy that we have just sent to cabinet for approval and then the next stage would be implementation um, we call it integrated because it looks at the entire continuum from bridge to reef right um, We've done some work before and the other thing too that it also tries to address not only conservation of our natural resources but also to adaptation to the impacts of climate change because as an island state we're quite vulnerable and we need to build our resilience and build our ecosystem resilience to these impacts. That is correct, that's true because we see it now that we are easily affected by it. Biodiversity means a lot to myself and the organization. Um, our goal is basically to bring back the biodiversity through the planting of forests and also it will lead to the increase in 
plant species, tree species, and also wildlife. So it's something that's very close to me personally. Um, it, it's aligned with my personal goals and objective, and also that of the National Reforestation Program, because we are mandated to do so. So it directly aligns with us. That's lovely. And do you think, what do you think are the issues being faced? The issues being faced currently uh, under the team of biodiversity, I would say, is land management issues. Um, issues like quarrying, um, illegal agricultural activities, really hamper um, efforts to firstly restore and to maintain biodiversity in Trinidad and Tobago. So, cases where people just go and slash and burn, who light forest fires is a major issue as well, especially those of us in the forestry sector. Um, we have had losses of lives over the years. And also, so these activities, and most of the fire, forest fires take place due to human activities, human negligence. And these things take years to rehabilitate, I can speak to that, and they could be gone in an instant. So I think land management issues in terms of how we deal with quarrying, how we deal with um, illegal agriculture, enforcement as well. That's wonderful, Darren. But do you think that we are doing enough locally to address those issues? On one hand, I think there is a lot of civil society organizations that are working hard, trying, um, but there's always more to, that could be done. Um, on the national scale, I think that a little more vigor in terms of getting the policies out there, getting the enforcement taking place to help protect and give a little teeth to the groups and to the organizations like ourselves who want to protect and rehabilitate uh, areas that may be degraded. What does this topic mean to you? In terms of that, what do you think of the status? What do you think of biodiversity? When you, when you think of bi biodiversity, what does it mean to you? Biodiversity means so much to me, especially working at Azerite Nature Center because every day I am able to interact or see a lot of the different reptiles, birds that exist in Trinidad and Tobago that people may not see on a regular basis. Trinidad has a very high number, but a, a very high level of biodiversity. We have over 400 species of birds, about 100 species of mammals, and several others. One of my favorite examples to give is the hummingbird. We have about we have 18 species of hummingbirds in Trinidad and Tobago, and in the state of New York, there's actually only one species of hummingbird. Really? Yeah. Wow. So that puts it into perspective. So I think Trinidad and Tobago is a gold mine for wildlife, for plants, and everybody needs to recognize that. Everybody needs to show an appreciation and do their part to protect. We were talking about, like you said, that how we have a lot of wildlife and a lot of flora and fauna. But are there any issues associated with it? Yeah. Is there any issues with anything in general? Yeah, so there will be issues as with anywhere. So we do have illegal hunting in Trinidad. We do have clearing of a lot of habitats for urbanization and different uses. Of course, we have pollution and we all know the environment needs to be clean for the animals and plants to thrive. We talked about what we could personally do, but do you think Trinidad is doing anything to address those issues? Well, I think they've made a, good, a step in the right direction recently by making the scarlet ibis an environmentally sensitive species. They increase the hunting fines a lot, and I think those two things will keep. However, as usual, more can be done.